Hello! Uh, since I recently did a video on preparing for exams, I thought what I would do is a follow-on video on what to do after an exam. Now overall, most of the videos I plan to make or that I've already made are about learning in general. And to be honest, I prefer not to dwell so much on exams specifically because uh, that type of information would only be useful when learning in the context of school. And my goal in this series of videos on learning skills is to help you with optimizing how you learn more broadly and in general. But at the same time, I do believe that there are ways in which you could apply exam-related techniques towards uh, more broadly becoming a better learner. Uh, now, now, when it comes to learning or pretty much uh, successful acquisition of any skill, you have to be able to balance your time between strategy and tactics. And that is reflecting on what you uh, should be doing as well as actually doing it. And I'll often see students focus on tactics, but never take a step back to consider their underlying strategy. So one opportunity to focus on strategy is after you see the results of an exam, or in general, after any situation in which you're evaluated on your performance, whether it be an exam or you see how you did on a homework assignment or what have you. And after every exam uh, or every homework assignment, I think you should actually conduct an exam post-mortem. So do what's called a post-mortem analysis. Let me just highlight that so you can... So exam post-mortem analysis. Now post-mortem analysis is something that you typically see uh, chess players actually do quite extensively. And what they'll do is they'll dissect their games that they've played. Uh, they'll try to identify any mistakes they've made during the game. And here they're benefiting from the fact that uh, if they're doing this after the fact of the game, they, they actually are benefiting from the fact that they no longer have to worry about time limits and that they can actually move the pieces around to better visualize key scenarios on the board. So it's something they can do um, in a much more uh, peaceful fashion than when they're actually playing the game. And you should do something similar. You should do a similar post-mortem analysis for each exam that you take. And after you get your results back, sit down and ask yourself what you could have done to improve your performance. And you should be looking to identify both better studying tactics as well as better test-taking tactics that would help you to achieve a better outcome the next time around. So in particular, I think there are a couple of high-level questions you should be asking yourself. Uh, first of all, you know, what did you get wrong? I mean, that's a very key question you should think about. What did you get wrong? Uh, why did you get it wrong? And how could you have adjusted your studying and test-taking to have avoided losing those points? Think about what you got right. Was your answer optimal? And, and sometimes we get the right answer, but we may expend more effort than we needed in order to get it. And in turn, we might then lose time that could have been spent on other questions. And I think that's an important point. I mean, sometimes you, you get something right, you think you know it, you can always learn something better. And, and more fundamentally, given what you now know about the exam composition, could you have studied more efficiently for it? Could you have studied more efficiently for it? Uh, and that's, again, a key question. And, and sometimes, you know, we don't think about whether we're doing the right kinds of things, but it's very important to take a step back and, and reconsider our strategy once in a while. Okay, even if you got a perfect score, there may be dimensions along which you could have improved. Uh, for example, maybe you could have studied more efficiently in retrospect, or perhaps you could have answered some problems more efficiently. And maybe the next time around, for the next exam, the exam might be harder, and those extra minutes that you saved can come in handy. And actually, I had this happen to me personally. Uh, in one case, I was taking a course uh, on the theory of computation. This is a, a fairly advanced uh, undergraduate or early graduate level course in computer science. And actually, I did really well on the first test. I got 100% on the first test. And this was actually largely because it was a subject in which I had some prior exposure and I had a pretty solid foundation. Uh, but despite the fact that I did well on the test, I still took the time to review the test. And after comparing my answers with those that were offered in the solution set, I picked up a couple of tricks. I realized that, you know, there were a couple of ways in which I could have expressed a particular solution to a couple of the problems more succinctly and it could have saved some time in, in doing so. Even though I had the right answer, I could have done that right answer, provided that right answer uh, in less time and in less space with less effort. And it turns out on the final exam, which is actually far harder than the, the initial exam, uh, some of the same kinds of problems did show up and I was able to save a bit of time when I answered them. And then I actually was able to use that time 
towards some of the more complex problems in the final. This was a really, really hard final exam. I think the, uh, uh, the score that was required for an A on that exam was, uh, if you got maybe about 60% of the problems right, you could have gotten an A on the exam, just to give you an idea of how hard that particular exam was. Uh, and it was, it was the case that if you got 60% right, you were somewhere in the upper echelon of the class. I actually ended up doing really well on that exam, but primarily because I was able to uh, save some time on the easier problems and then devote that time towards kind of maximizing my score on some of the harder problems. Now, aside from what I've just mentioned, there are some specific things I think you could be doing, and I'll, I'll talk about some lower level tactics associated with doing post-mortem analysis. Okay, so the first thing you should think about is, is what are the kinds of questions you encountered and, and what um, did you feel that those kinds of questions, what were you thought you would encounter? Um, if not, then maybe you have to better understand how the test is being conducted or being constructed. Oftentimes a teacher will take homework problems or they'll take prior exam problems and a large fraction of the exam might be based on what was, ex what was there in the past. And so you can often figure things out. But if you find that the problems look nothing like you thought they would look like, then there's a good chance you weren't studying in a way that was effective for that test. And you could probably uh, spend some more time thinking about how the teacher goes about constructing a test. Did you encounter any difficulty across multiple topics or was there a specific topic that you had trouble with? Now, if you had um, trouble with uh, many, many topics, again, that might be an indication that you're fundamentally studying in the wrong way for that test. You may need to fundamentally rethink your study strategy. If you had problems with just one topic, then perhaps you didn't spend enough time on it, or perhaps there were particular aspects of that topic that gave you trouble. Uh, and again, I think it's important because if something is giving you trouble, you should spend some time focusing on it so you can learn that particular area better. Uh, and that's one aspect of being an effective learner. I think people often treat all topics equally, but the reality is that there may be some topics that you get more easily and other topics you have to spend more time on. Uh, so it's important to figure out what you don't know and spend time on what you don't know to get better at that particular area if you think it's going to be an appropriate thing for you to want to learn. Uh, did you invest the appropriate amount of time? Uh, and more basically, did you invest more time in areas that were not emphasized on the exam? and too little time in areas that were emphasized. Okay, and again, that's, that's kind of a basic, uh, basic question you should be asking yourself. Did you misinterpret any questions? And what led to those misinterpretations? Perhaps, you know, there were certain questions and you thought the professor wanted one thing, but they wanted something different. Uh, and maybe that's because you misread the question. Maybe it's because uh, uh, you fundamentally didn't understand something about that area. And again, it's important to get to the bottom of that. Awesome, talk about that. Uh, did you make any mistakes in your notes? And what led to those mistakes? And how can you prevent similar mistakes from happening in the future? You know, sometimes we get something wrong because we had a wrong understanding and we have a wrong understanding because we, we just learned it wrong the first time. We took the wrong notes down and we elaborated on those notes. Uh, you know, oftentimes, uh, it's very hard, I think, uh, to take notes in class and, and listen and pay attention, especially when the material is going at a very rapid pace. Uh, so maybe next time around, you could augment your notes with a textbook or maybe compare your notes with those of other students or maybe uh, the issue is that you didn't uh, go home that same day and, and look over your notes after class and, and oftentimes you forget stuff within a short period of time and so uh, when you do take notes in class it's good to go over those notes very quickly um, after that class preferably within 48 hours and ideally within 24 hours because there may be mistakes that you've made and you may be able to correct those mistakes if you can rely on your memory but uh, if you if you wait too long, you might have forgotten stuff that happened in the lecture, and then your notes become, you know, your your main guide, and so you should be careful about making mistakes in your notes. Uh, did you lose any silly points? Uh, for example, is there something you could have done right, but maybe you just forgot to do something that was really minor, like you forgot to show a particular step? Again, very critical because uh, you you don't want to miss any opportunities for partial credit in a, on a test, and in general, you don't want to miss any opportunities for uh, for getting things right, and, and I think a lot of people do that. Um, and in general, I mean, for partial credit, you know, remember the teachers are using the test to see how well you understand the material. I mean, ideally, not every teacher does that, but I think most teachers are interested in, in seeing how well you understand things. And so if you can impart to your teacher that you understand something well, you may get partial credit, at least um, even if you can't get the whole answer right or the problem fully right, the teacher might say, well, you know what, you were close to being right and maybe you you missed uh, something relatively minor, you could have gotten it, 
uh, but at least you understand what's going on, and they'll often give you partial credit for that. And in fact, you know, I should really stress this point because when I was actually when I was an undergraduate, I actually was a uh, teaching assistant for a junior senior level class, uh, computer science class on algorithms, and and on the exams. Um, Oftentimes, the students who got the highest score on a particular problem, uh, there's actually one particular exam I can think of where the student who got the highest score on a particular problem did so because he maximized his opportunities for partial credit. And I remember this very vividly. It was a particularly difficult problem. It was an algorithmic problem. And, and actually, nobody in the class succeeded in getting it completely right. There were five steps of the problem, and he got four of them right. Now, on the fifth step, it was particularly tricky, and he realized that he didn't know how to answer it. And he was forthcoming about that. He actually said, you know what? I really want to make approach X work, but I'm stuck because of factor Y. And the problem overall was worth uh, 10 points. And because he got eight points off the bat for getting the first four steps right, uh, and what he ended up doing is he actually demonstrated why he couldn't solve the problem on the fifth part, or the last part of the problem. And he got one point out of two on that last part uh, because he was honest about why he didn't understand what was going on. And so you got a total of nine points in the problem, which actually was the highest grade that any student got on that one problem. Now, some other students, you know, in the last part, and they got the first four parts right, but in the last part, they tried to make up an answer, even though the answers they gave made no logical sense. I mean, they tried to kind of wave their hands around an answer that, that really just didn't compute. And in the end, you know, I believe, and I was grading that particular test, I believe that it's one thing not to know the answer, but it's quite another to actually know that you didn't know the answer. And so I rewarded that student for recognizing what he didn't know. And in, in particular, what I was really giving him credit for was that he demonstrated a certain level of understanding that was beyond zero. So, you know, I had to give him some credit for being able to at least demonstrate some level of understanding on that problem. And in general, if you have any questions about your test studying methodology, you should try to talk to your teacher about the test and see if he or she has any ideas on how you could improve. And actually, let me write that down here. Talk to your teacher. It's a very important thing. So talk to your teacher. OK. Uh, and in fact, uh, you know, I would imagine that the vast majority of teachers would be open to discussing that with you. I mean, they may not tell you what's going to be on the exam specifically, but they might be willing to dedicate sometime telling you whether or not you're studying in the right way or give you some ideas for how to study. Okay, teachers are generally willing to help you if you're willing to help yourself. And on a similar note, I would also seek out students. So maybe talk to your teacher and fellow students. Okay, because fellow students, some of them may have done particularly well in the course. Maybe some of them have taken it in previous years. Um, and if you know somebody who's done that, that's a great way to find out what's going on. And you may be able to find out what a good student does differently. And sometimes it just might be that they have had prior exposure to the material or that they have a very strong foundation from previous courses. And, and certainly you know, that should be an indication that it, you won't do well unless you pay your dues and you spend your time, so to speak. Uh, and that you happen to be in a class with students who've paid their dues already. But you may be able to pick out uh, one or two good nuggets on how to perform better on a future exam. So I'm going to stop here and I hope you found this video useful. I look forward to seeing you in future videos.